Wallpin, wallpin, wallpin. If you are a seasoned Ableton Live user, you will be more than familiar with the concept of Warpin. Even though I'm not a regular Ableton Live user, Warpin for me was one of the standout features that was just epic, if I'm honest. FL Studio really struggles with uh, any sort of Warpin. They have a, they've got a plugin called New Tone, which addresses it slightly, but it's nowhere near as good as Ableton Live, and it's nowhere near as good as Bitwig. As we all know, Bitwig contains some developers from Ableton Live, so we can see some familiarities between the two features. But I figured I'd quickly cover Warpin in its full glory. Uh, what I've got is I've got this sexy little drum loop that I'm just going to play for you now. Cool, so if we just zoom in to the grid, I've set the grid to 16 beats per bar. You'll be able to see that the snare, or the kick and the snare, doesn't fall on the grid, which from a from a drum beat perspective is a good thing because it means that the drum loop has swing to it. And I'll definitely encourage you not to quantize this to make the, the hits on the beat because it's nice to have a groove. Of course, you're your own person and you can do what you like, but that's that's my preference. To to demonstrate warping, I would have preferred to use a sample. So if you're sample if you're a hip-hop producer and you're sampling off of a record, then you're probably going to be more likely to want to use warping to ensure that your hits fall on the each of the beats. But for, for copyright purposes, I can't really use a sample, so I'm just going to use a drum break. Imagine you didn't want groove in this drum loop and you wanted to move the snare here, like more, more so here, if you wanted to move the snare here, move the kick back, let me just make sure that is what that is, kick, okay, so snare, kick, okay, so I'm going to pretend that that's the case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to double click, well first of all, um, what Bitwig does is it keeps to the uh, the beat and bar, uh, the beats per bar setting down here, so you can see that it's automatically snapping. So I've got it to 16 beats, but you can change it to what you like. So if you want it to four, as you'll see, it picks up the transient as well. But other than that, it will snap accordingly. I'm just gonna go back up to 16s. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to double click where you want the warp in to begin. So I'm gonna double click on the transient here. Cool. And then it's as simple as this. Drag the marker, and there you go. The Hit is now on the grid, so we'll just play that. And we can do the same for the kick. I'm gonna drag that back a little bit. There we go. Same for this one. And you get the idea. If you want to place a, a marker without snapping to the grid, you can just hold Control, no, that's a lie. You can just hold Shift. There you go, and you can put one in wherever you like. Let's just undo that. Alternatively, if you you'll notice that when I do that, it drags the rest of the sample with me, so it keeps it relative to what it was previously. If you don't want the rest of the sample to move along, and again, this this may be specific to sampling where you want to keep everything behind it in place you insert, so in, in this instance, I'll insert a marker at the end of the transient or the end of the um, the sustain of the hit. So around about here and then around about here. Then if I drag, you'll notice that it doesn't move the rest of the sample to left and right. I don't know why I was just pointing at the screen then. You obviously can't see me pointing. Um, but yeah, so you can drag that way and it doesn't affect the rest of the loop. Uh, and that's pretty much it. If you want to get any closer, you can just zoom in to fine tune. I've already mentioned the settings here to fine tune it again. Wow, I didn't realize it goes up that high. Jesus. Right, that's it on Warpin. If you like the videos, check back on my channel for future videos in the series. Preach.